Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and I'm joined here by Ross Mori, General Manager at IBM Z. Second video in this series, excited to have you back and to talk a little bit about IBM, the mainframe, and AI. And you know, in case anyone missed it, uh, we did have another conversation already about app modernization, so I hope you tune into it. But this one, Ross, we're gonna talk about something near and dear to my heart and becoming increasingly near and dear to right. your heart, and that's AI. That's right. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a good conversation. Excited to be here. So the Tellum announcement, congratulations. Very exciting. Talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, give the overall kind of thought process on Tellum, uh, the evolution, why you're getting more focused on AI in this particular uh, rev. Um, because I think everybody would just like to hear a little bit. And by the way, this is part of that great research and development that uh, comes out of IBM. That's right. So. Um, Tellum is, is the microprocessor that's going to be in the next generation um, IBM Z system. And why we did a hot chip special announcement and focus around it was because we were, we were pretty proud of the innovation that's in it, but we also wanted to signal to the market and to our clients how serious we were about going beyond you know, advanced analytics on the platform and going to full deep learning and being able to bring AI into their most important transactions. I mean, that, that was the, really the goal. Our clients have such a wealth of data uh, that's created operationally on IBM Z. And for many years, clients could do analytics and analysis and SQL queries and all kinds of things on that data. More and more, they were copying it off so that they could try to do AI on it um, off platform. And many of them told us that not only was that too costly, but more importantly, they couldn't connect them back then to the operational system. So it's back to their operational system and using their business insights, but at full velocity. Yeah, I think every, and, 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 and obviously everyone out there is hearing about AI, a lot about AI. And a lot of us think about it maybe as a data center cloud thing, some people might think about it as like a almost an edge on device because we have our at home smart speakers and our phones and we're doing natural language processing, but maybe not so much thinking about AI and the role that your business, the mainframe and how you're approaching it. Talk a little bit about kind of that broader use case and, and why you're putting so much energy in this next uh, generation around AI. Sure, so our clients, um run very large transaction, would be called transaction systems. Whether it's an airline reservation system or it's a large uh, core banking system, you name it, these are very large, very complex, but they're transaction systems. So transactions that have to have integrity in the entire transaction because they, they build in one or more absolute financial things that are gonna get changed and written in a ledger or moved from one account to another. So within these systems, our clients, my clients have been saying, we really would like to be able to do more and more um, use of data. I'll just put it that way. They, I don't know if they ever said to me AI, but they, they wanted to use more analytics. That was what they were saying. And if you step back and look at the, at the transaction processing, um, a medium-sized client of ours could be doing you know, 15,000 transactions a second through their system. Uh, a large client could be doing 50,000 and beyond that. We have clients that, that do well more than a billion of these complex transactions per day. So it's the speed and the scale of their transaction system, but being able to, in a very small window, you know, two to four milliseconds, be able to do a full AI deep learning inference call. That's what, that's what in talking to them it came down to. And so the Tellum processor is designed to be, to be that beast that can do you know, a lot of those inferences uh, every second. Um, and the use cases that our clients are talking about are think of things like fraud detection for a credit card or a banking card or a payment card. How many swipes of those cards go on every day? I mean, a lot. And most card companies can't do can't do 100% fraud detection on the swipe in that two to four milliseconds. So we said, we can fix that problem. We can, we, can, we, can, we can change things so that you can do it on everyone, regardless of how many transactions per second you do. So that, that, was, 
that was the, the, the genesis of it, I think. And now the, broad, the use cases are really broadening out well beyond just, you know, say, credit card processing. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and, and as I'm listening, I'm, I'm registering my mind. All right, I'm going to hit you on a few more of these because I, I do want to hear about that because a lot of the market, no matter which particular side of infrastructure, architecture, software, AI we're on, it's all about improving experiences. It's about more contextualization of data. It's about being able to do things in real time. Uh, you're talking about fraud detection, which is a value add that most people don't actually recognize until it's their card <laughs> that's being fraudulently swiped. But there has to be more cases than that because that's been a that's been an area we've heard a lot about. Um, can you share a little bit more? I mean, you're probably talking to some customers. I know you can't give divulge too much, um, but what are some of the other cases that you mentioned that are popping out? So I'll just tell you the cases that we're actively working on clients today, either, either they're in production, they're in pre-production, or they're waiting until next year. And um, so there's lots of things like uh, settlement, and and um, and but there's upsell opportunities, so upsell of a revenue opportunity during a transaction, and then there's things that go out of I would say finances. Like believe it or not, we're working with a very large health provider in the United States because they've figured out with us, with my scientists, um, that they there's some medical imaging applications that actually can be done the best in a transaction format being done with IBM Z. So we're off into, we're well beyond say banking, right? right? And financial services now, and of course, insurance. Um, so loan origination, loan granting, things like that. We've got multiple clients working with us on that, but we're now off, we're into healthcare. And I think we're gonna, you're gonna see us in, in other industries because again, the data that's, a, that's available is powerful you have to access it in this really short windows during the transaction in order to get that business insight, that business value, and make a decision and do it tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times a second. Yeah, I see so much opportunity and I just think to myself about whether it is a decision being made by a healthcare provider in that second. I mean, there's so much complexity inside of the healthcare space that has nothing to do with the systems available. It has to do with the red tape and the and. But once we can kind of break down some of those silos, same thing in 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 finances and fintech, uh, to make sure that we're managing because security and safety is one of those big things. Of course, giving healthcare providers the best data and information to be able to make decisions in the moment to take care of patients. Those are all meaningful and material experience enhancements that can be done, and that volume of processing is one of those things I guess none of us really think about. But to kind of you know. Like when you're swiping your credit card, nobody's like sitting there going, God, there's a million credit cards being swiped this second. And the technology required to enable one of these, you know, these transaction companies that manages to do this and do it securely, it's unbelievable. So the fact is, is that behind that, that curtain, Z is, is the technology that many of these financial institutions are using. And of course, as we move modern, modernize into things like the blockchains being used to support these things, you will also be a very important technology behind that. So that's going to be something that, you know, those applications I'm sure are going to be stories that are going to start to come out more and more, hopefully in maybe a future conversation that we'll have. I can even give you a couple right now. All right, do it. So um, not many people know this, but we actually have um, IBM Z's in the IBM public cloud and you can only access them through um, a platform as a service known as the HyperProtect services. So how do you access those services like you would on any public cloud? You'd, you sign up, you pay, you access through APIs like any cloud, right? So, but what those services do is they bring banking grade security and confidential computing to the masses. So we have 100 startups in an accelerator most are fintechs. There's a few insure techs. There's a few health techs. Um, why would they come to the? Uh, why would they come off of other hyperscalers onto the IBM cloud? It's because of this capability of confidential computing, blockchain-based, based you know, digital ledger-based applications that can be totally secure while while the data is at rest, in flight, and in use. Right? We can protect all of it. We can protect it from any type of access. So there's, you know, there's always insider threat you hear about. With our confidential computing environment, we give the client, the, the end user, um, what we call is technical assurance. What you get from the hyperscalers is you get operational insurance. You, you sign a contract that says operationally, they won't allow a 
a human with the right privilege to touch your data. With ours, we can't touch your data. The IBM team, the SRE team, the, the system programmers behind the IBM cloud, even if they wanted to, without the keys that you hold, it's keep your own key, no one can touch your data. So confidential computing, privacy of your data, security of your data, blockchain-based applications running now at scale. 10,000 transactions a second for blockchain-based data, and we're gonna go way beyond that. So again, I've just told about the 100 um, um, startups we have, which is, uh, which, is, which is a, to me, was just, how do I get to the companies that have vision, technical capability, they're getting funding, but they might not have access to resources like a big you know, global bank would. Now they can do it via the IBM public cloud and the HyperProtect services. Yeah, I actually had the chance to uh, participate a little bit in that. I, I met with some of those startups. I talked to them, provided some some feedback to your teams when they were going through the uh, review and the judging process. Because there was a big contest, I remember, on that right. too. So I had a lot of fun with that. And by the way, that's kind of an important point to reiterate is you know that 10,000 transactions on the blockchain. Because a lot of people think that that's been a, a limiting factor with the blockchain. It, it can't handle volume the same way of, of, of you know, traditional compute. And so you're starting to see with your technology behind it that it is possible to handle that volume of transactions because we're gonna need both. You need that, that, that ledger and that's to manage, and you also need to be able to do the volume to be able to get value out of that. And so it sounds like you're doing both. Now you mentioned technical and operational insur assurance, and I like that you mentioned that because you know, bad actors are unfortunately a problem in, in every society. And of course, companies take a lot of steps when they're vetting people, clearances, and make sure that the people they can get into data centers, anyone that's ever been to one of these tier one data centers has seen, it's, it's, no, it's no joke to be able to get inside of one of these places. But having said that, reiterating the fact that with technical assurance, people cannot. Operational, there's bad actors, there is risk, there is a possibility, and we've actually seen it happen. Right. And so you can't, just say, oh yeah, well, it's vetted and careful, and so it never happens. It has happened. Data has gotten out. It's caused breaches. It's caused leaks. It's caused denial of services that have that have been noted, and um, some of us have maybe lost access to some of our favorite apps at the time, and we don't necessarily always know why that, uh, that happens. But I just wanted to reiterate that before I got to the next question, because you did talk about operational AI. What about that? Because that's a little bit less maybe cool or sexy, but operational AI has got to be part of your story with. Uh, with what you're building out. Yeah, it's actually a critical element. I mean, I look at AI with and, I, and IBM Z in two flavors. I mean, there's the business insight, which we've been talking about, but then there's this operational excellence. So using things like AI ops to really be able to um, oversee the operations of a system that's so complex and having so many transactions it is beyond human scope already is like critical for us. And that's just, one example of bringing AI into the system. I, I think we're going to have ML ops for machine learning. I think we're I think we're going to be bringing AI inside the IBM Z for anomaly detection and other types of security uh, pr pr protections, uh, but also to help balance workloads and things that. Again, humans used to have to tune by hand and be really knowledgeable about. Well, we're smart enough now to leverage AI, build the right models, and have the system take care of itself. So there's going to be so there's business insights that are very important from, from an AI point of view. There's how a client will operate the system, and then it's the AI within the system that will continue to make it that much more capable and I would say valuable to our clients. Well, we've seen the investments that IBM has made in observability, and this is kind of like a little microcosm of that, right? Observability within you know, within the hardware and your product line. So let's wrap up and kind of go from, we went from macro to micro. Let's go back to macro a minute. You know, we're hearing a lot about, obviously, Arvind Krishna since taking over, the, the spinoff of Kindrel, the company's really narrowed in its focuses into, you know, the hybrid cloud and the AI and data services space. You know, talk a little bit about how your business is aligning with those strategic, uh, you know, initiatives. And of course, what you're sort of seeing more broadly across the organization. So, you know, Arvin really has brought a, a focus um, to a clear and concise strategy, and that really is hybrid cloud and AI, as you said. And within that, I've realigned um, our investments, especially in software, um, around those two key pillars. 
Um, and I think that you know the integration within IBM and the, and the and and I would say the the meaningfulness of how Z is positioned within the full IBM strategy hasn't been stronger in decades. So we are right in the middle, at the heart of Arvin's strategy, and we also connect out to other divisions of IBM that are helping to implement that strategy, like IBM Consulting, or perhaps the folks that are putting forth the data fabric. Right, We're connected within the IBM products and services lines, and also, again, implementing all of the key technologies, use cases, and proof points that show that IBM is the hybrid cloud and enterprise AI partner to have. Yeah, you're definitely firing on, on all cylinders. It seems that the, the narrative is starting to be better understood and better adopted. And this is something I, I can tell you as an analyst, I've been waiting for just to see how do we address the simplification that is required for the market to fully understand and appreciate. Unfortunately, sometimes being in so many things, and this is something that IBM is famous for because you're, you're, you're curious. It's a curious company, and curious companies tend to invent a lot of things. But sometimes when you're curious about so many things, you need to make it digestible. That's what I've noticed. Seemingly, you've got your business focused on those same initiatives, and having that consistent across all the different businesses is very important. That's great. That's right. And uh, IBM Investor Day recently, I think, highlighted that because it was a very clear picture of the whole company, how all the pieces fit together. And I know you were watching. You saw IBM Z uh, well positioned uh, within that. Absolutely. Even commented a few times about it. Thanks, Ross, for uh, you know chatting on this one. And I look forward. Let's jump over to another topic here in a little bit. Absolutely. Thank you.